I'm going to choose to display all of the different permission levels that I had added. So that was our admin, our manager, and our coordinator. And then for the actual text that's displayed in which a user can select, I'm going to display the current option set. It's display. Hello, my name is Lachlan Kirkwood, and today I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about using option sets within Bubble. When I first started using Bubble, I actually had no idea option sets existed until a couple months in, and once I discovered how they were used within an application, it completely changed the way I built any project within my editor. Option sets essentially just allow you to store a permanent value within your database, that you can later reference at any point throughout your application. Unlike data types within your application, users can't actually create entries that sit within an option set list. So only you as the admin of your application will have the ability to do that. And now a great example for using option sets is if you're storing and displaying a list of categories within an application. So let's say you're creating a marketplace within Bubble and you'd like to display a drop down menu with a list of categories that a user can filter a repeating group with. If you were to create those categories as a data type, you would later on have to go into your bubble app and manually create every entry that you want to display. And because it's a data type, you of course could allow users to create categories as well. But I would personally prefer to do this using a list of option sets. So with option sets, you can create the list of categories once and then easily reference that at any given point throughout your application. So within your drop down menu, instead of having to perform a search through your data type or manually have to type in a static list of all those categories, you can easily just reference your option set list and it would display all those categories at once. And now the reason you wouldn't want to give users the ability to create categories is because you'd quickly lose control over the formatting of the categories that are added. So there's no guaranteeing that users are going to add the categories without any typos or even add any duplicate categories. So if you were to use a list of option sets, it just allows you to create a single source of truth. And now while I can sit here and try and explain to you how option sets are used, I find the best way to learn is just by showing you some tangible examples that you can implement into your own Bubble application. So let's open up a Bubble editor and I can start walking you through the process. Over in my Bubble editor here, I've created just a sample page that will be leveraging a list of option sets on today. What I would like to do though first is just walk you through the process of how we can actually create an option set list within our database. So if we were to head over into our data tab here, you'll see under the list of tabs here that by default, you're currently viewing the data type tab within your database. But over on the right hand side, you'll also see where you can add in a list of option sets. And now the first thing you might notice is that the interface here for creating an option set actually looks much the same to the process of creating a data type. So you can create the overarching name of a data type itself, and then you'll be able to add in a list of attributes, which is like a list of data fields in order to just store any additional information you'd like within it. And so for my example today, what I'd like to do is to show you how we can create a permission structure within a company's user accounts. So on my page here, I've just created an internal dashboard with a repeating group on it that will just allow us to display all of the users within a team. And what I'd like to do is essentially just add a drop down menu that displays a list of access titles that just gives users different permissions throughout our application. So if for instance, a user is listed as an admin, I'd like them to have the ability to update and delete an existing team member within this repeating group. And if a user has a lower permission type like a coordinator, I don't want them to be able to have access to these features. And so it's within this drop down menu that I'm going to be displaying my list of option sets. And then I'll just take the time to also walk you through the process of creating conditions based on certain option sets. 
But before we do that, we're just going to need to build out the different permission levels that we can give to users within our team. So if we jump back into our data tab, head over to our option sets menu. What I'd like to do is create a new option set called permission. And I will choose to create this overarching option set. And now within this list, I'll just be adding in all of the different permission levels that users within our team could potentially have. And so I'm gonna start by adding in the permission level called admin. I'll then choose to create that. I will add in a manager. And then finally, I'll add in a coordinator. And now one thing I would just like to note is that within our drop down menu, we're going to be displaying the list of permissions here. And the list of options in that drop down menu are going to be displayed based on the order of the options that we've added in our list here. So it's going to start with admin, then that'll be followed by manager and finally coordinator. If you'd like to move these items around within our list though, you can simply just choose from the options here to either move these up or move them down within our list. And that's how they will then be represented within our drop down menu. The other thing I'd like to point out is that you can create additional attributes for each option within this list. So under our permissions list, we've created just three plain text options. And each option, as I just mentioned, is a text entry. And so the display of each option is just set as a text type. But if you'd like to store any additional information for each individual entry, you can create what's called an attribute within this. And if I open this up, you'll see that this looks much the same as the process of creating a data field within a data type. So you can essentially give this attribute a name and then you can choose what type of data this will be. So would you like the attribute to be an image, a file, or even a geographic address? And I'll be showing you another example in a moment as to how we can leverage different attributes. But if, for instance, you were to add an image attribute, it would just essentially allow you to upload a dedicated image for each individual option that you could then later on reference throughout any point in your application. For now though, I'm just going to keep this example quite basic. So I'm just going to keep my option set list as a list of display text. And then if I'd like to actually display this list, I'm gonna jump back into my design tab here. And within my drop down menu for my team members in the dashboard, what I'd like to do is display a list of all of the choices that I've just added into my option set list. So with my drop down here, I'm going to update the choices style to be a list of dynamic choices because I'd like to pull the options that are displayed from my database. And of course, in this case, I'll be pulling through the option set list. And so the type of choices I would like to display within my drop down is going to be our permission option set. And now for the data source of the options that are displayed within this drop down menu, I'm going to choose to display all of the different permission levels that I had added. So that was our admin, our manager, and our coordinator. And then for the actual text that's displayed in which a user can select, I'm going to display the current option set it's display, which if you remember in our database here, the display was just the text itself for each individual option. So I'm gonna be displaying the words admin, manager, and coordinator. While I'm here though, what I will need to do is just create a relevant data field under my user data type that just allows me to store a single option from our option set list as that user's account permission. So I wanna be able to store whether or not they are an admin, a manager, or even a coordinator. And so if I jump over to our data types and open up our user data type, you can see I just currently have two data fields here. One is the name of the user and the other is a profile photo. What I'd like to do is add an additional field that will link through to our option set list and allow us to store one particular entry, which will just be the level of permission that that user should have. So I'm going to create a new field here, and I'm gonna be calling this account permission. And for the field type here, I would like to reference our permission option set. And because one user will only have one permission type at once, so they can either be an admin, a manager, or a coordinator, they can't be all three at once. 
I'm not going to select that this is a list with multiple entries, but by all means, if you were using an option set list where you want a user to select multiple options, a good example is let's say you want a user to select multiple different time slots that they're available from within a list of times in an option set. You could actually have that as a list of multiple entries because they could select more than one time slot. But for our tutorial today, I'm just going to leave this as a single entry. So I'm gonna to choose to create that. And what you'll now see is this data field is actually linked through to our permission option set type. And so now I can actually create a workflow within our repeating group and update the permission type that each user has when a button is selected. So if I jump into my design tab again, I'm just gonna zoom out there and with our update button here, what I'd like to do is just create a workflow that updates the current cells user's permission type to match the same value that's saved within our dropdown here. And so I'm going to create a workflow every single time the update button is clicked. And within this workflow, I'm going to make changes to the current cells user. And in this case, I'm just going to update their account permission field. And I'd like this to equal the same value as our dropdown permissions. So I'll select its value. And because both our account permission data field and our permission option set are stored as the option set list, Bubble will be able to connect both of those data entries together quite nicely. And now that I've created a way to actually update the account permissions of a user's account based on our option set list, what I could also do is create a condition on both of our buttons here that only allows these to be accessed if the user's permission is currently set to be an admin. So in this case, I've created a button here, which within this workflow, just deletes a user from a team whenever it's clicked. If you were building an admin dashboard, you might only want the admins themselves within your team to be able to access this feature. So what we can do is actually just create a condition that only allows this button to be displayed to those users who have an admin permission type. And so what I'm gonna do is unselect that this button should be visible on page load. And then I'm going to create a condition here that will only display this button to those users registered as admins. So I'm going to define a new condition. And within this permission, I just like to recognize when the current user, so that's the person logged in viewing this team dashboard, when their account permission data field is, and in this case, I'm going to select from our admin option. And as you can see, it's displaying all of the options within our option set list. But I'm just going to recognize when the current sales user their account permission type is an admin. I would like this element to be visible and tick that that is true. So now it's only going to display this button to those users who are registered as an admin. And what I'd like to do now is just take a preview of my application to show you how this feature functions. Over in my account dashboard here, I have a list of all of the team members within my team. I can currently see that my account is set to be a manager. So if I would like to open up my option set list, I can see the remaining two options. And in this case, I'd like to update my account to be an admin. And now what you'll find is that because I have the permission level of an admin, the delete button is now visible to my account. And if I would like, I could select that and it would run the workflow to delete users. But that is just one example of how you can create and use an option set list within a drop down menu. What I would just like to do quickly though is just show you another brief example of how you can display a list of option sets within a repeating group. And so if I jump back into my bubble editor here, I have a separate page within my application called a settings page. And this is just used to store a user's details like their name, their age, and their profile photo. But in this case, let's say I'd also like to store a user's favorite animal. And because I'd like to display a list of animals that they can choose from in a repeating group, I'm going to create those choices as a list of option sets. And so before I configure the repeating group, I'm just going to need to create this option set list within my database. So if I head back over to my data tab and jump over to my option sets, what I'd like to do is create another option set list called animals. 
I'll choose to create that. And now within this option set list, I'm just going to add in a list of animals that I'd like to display. So I can say things like a cat, a dog, a fish, and also maybe a goat. And now of course I just added in a list of displayed text. But what I would just like to do is just quickly show you how we can create some additional attributes. So beside every single text entry within my repeating group, I just like to display an image of each animal. And so in this case, I'll need to create a new attribute and I'll be calling this the image of each animal. And of course this attribute type will just need to be an image property. I won't be selecting that this is a list of images because one animal will have one featured image. So I'm just going to create that. And now in order to upload an image to each option, what I'll need to do is just select the modify attributes button here. And this will now display all of the data that will be stored for this particular option. So for our cat option, you can see that we have the display text and the ability to upload an image. So I'm just going to upload an image that I have stored on my local device here. And so once I've uploaded the image, I'll choose to save that. And then I can head on down to my next option, which is the dog. I'd like to modify those attributes and once again, upload another image. And so from my folder, I'm just going to select this image of a dog that I have and I will select to save that. And then I just have two last images I'd like to upload. There's the one for our fish. I'm just going to select that from my files. I'll choose to save that. And then finally, there was the image for our goat. I'll just select that, upload that, and choose to save that field. And now after I've added in all of the data I'd like to store within my option set list, I can jump back over into my design tab. And what I'd like to do now is just update the data source of our repeating group to display a list of all of the option sets that we've just added. And so for the type of content of this repeating group, I'm going to select from our animals option set list. And then for the data source, I'd like to display all of the animals that I've added to our list. And then of course, like any other repeating group, I can start adding in the elements that will be displayed within each cell. So the first thing I'd like to do is just add an image of each animal. And in order to do that, I'm just going to insert dynamic data and display the current cells animal. And this is where you'll be able to choose from the list of attribute fields within each option set list. In this case, I want to display the image of each animal. And then finally, if I'd like, I could add in the text of each animal, which of course would just be our display field. So I can insert dynamic data and choose to display the current cells animal, the display text. And that is how we can actually add in all of the options that we have added to our option set list within a repeating group. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how we can actually build a workflow to select each option. But what I'd like to do is just show you a quick preview as to how this repeating group looks within our bubble development environment. And so over in the settings page of my application, you can see within my repeating group here, I have a list of all of the animals that have added into my option set list, as well as the image attribute followed by the display text attribute. And just like that, you can start to see how powerful option sets can be within your bubble application. If you've already set up a database, I'd really recommend taking the time to just review all of the data types and fields you've created and just see if there's anything you can convert into option sets. But that's all I wanted to explain in today's tutorial. Of course, if you'd like to catch any other bubble tutorials and guides, I'd recommend hitting the subscribe button below. It'll just make sure you're the first to know when I drop a new tutorial explaining how to get the most out of the bubble platform.